Amen. Praise the Lord. So we are going to take time to answer questions in various areas. Uh, to make you clear about God and about going to heaven and about what he has commissioned this movement to do. So if the Lord has given, if you have a sincere question that you want to ask to give light to yourself and to the brethren, you are free to ask it. Bow your head in prayer. Pray that God will motivate the right questions. The flesh will not manifest itself. God will motivate the right questions. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father, we are grateful because you have directed us to do it this way. This evening, meet the needs of your people. Those people who have disturbing questions, answer them, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Yes, if you have questions to ask, can you stand up? Give them numbers now. Okay, okay, come forward, come forward. Yes, the first person. Praise the Lord. My question is this. In the family, I am the firstborn. And one of my sisters is supposed to be getting married. And I got wind that she told me he's getting married to a pastor. So I was happy, but I got another hint from an, uh, one of my other sisters that this pastor is a divorcee. And so that I should observe it, I should investigate it well, because she knows the implication. So I had to call my sister. I I called her this afternoon while I was here. I said, have you known this person well? Have you prayed about it? Say yes. If you find out who this person is about family background, what of his history? Has he married before? He said yes, that it's the woman that left him, he misbehaved and left. That I said the man is okay. I say no, the scripture doesn't permit that. As far as a partner is alive on earth, you can not marry another. So you, please, you can free yourself from that relationship. She said, if I don't want to come, I should leave that, that. That is not a matter that as far as he has read the Bible, I gave her scripture. I said, I've read those scriptures. I said, go and read it again and call me back. But he was not happy with it. And I made up my mind that if she will not budge, I will not attend the marriage. And I've been contemplating. I was actually planning that after the meeting, I would wait to come and ask. Then God made it that it's the session. So I said, I wouldn't go. I know it will affect the peace. But I am convinced that personally, let that peace be affected rather than going to give approval to that. So the question I'm asking is, Am I in order to take that decision like that? Uh, now you have verified that the man was duly married. Uh -huh. You will write a letter to that man and tell the man the position of scripture. You will write a letter to your sister and tell your sister the position of scripture and your position too. And then you forward the letter to your parents. Whoever is taking dowry on that woman should know his sins now. Then you remove yourself from the matter. Thank you.
Praise the Lord. My question is on this uh, addressing and adornment vis-a-vis uh, -vis our handbags and uh, shoes. Concerning these, all these shiny things that are used to decorate handbag, uh, it has given me some uh, concern because I had uh, one or two handbags like that and some have not been using them for a long time now. And uh, I want to know whether it is right for us to be using them. And then the shoes, decorations, shining things used to decorate our shoes. Praise the Lord. Uh, we want to be sure that we also don't in bondage ourselves with materials, property, for fear it is a sin. When it is seen, it will be clear. Like the sister who came to give testimony, when the shining stones were shining in her cloth, did you people not see it? Clearly. We said, don't use it again. And a boy was coming out from the electronic room here. I saw that the trouser was so tiny. It's just like as if it is the, is the mouth of a, is the end of a shirt. I said, he should never come out here to minister, to be giving microphone to people. No, don't do that. Because it's ungodliness. Amen? So this we will know. But there are some bags that, maybe some tiny glittering material is put around it. That has no problem. Because it is not, it's different from when a bag is decorated with shining materials around it. Is that okay? It is different. Because it will soon fade away. That thing will soon disappear from the back. It can scratch and disappear. Just maybe tiny around it. That's no problem. It's just like you have a wristwatch, you have a, a, a shining thing round about the wristwatch, even as I'm wearing it now, and maybe your wristwatch too. That doesn't mean, oh, this rich watch has become bad. But the ones that are heavily decorated, you should know them. The same thing goes with shoes. The shoes that are carrying precious stones, you should know them. Is that okay? Thank you. Praise the Lord. My question is from the Bible. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. When I read the Bible, I come across this verse. I'm confused. So I want to be clear today. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, from 16 and 17 says, Be not righteous over much, neither make thyself over wise. Why shouldest thou destroy thyself? Be not over much wicked, neither be thou foolish. Why shouldest thou die before thy time? That is another, uh, the first one. Another one is First John. First John chapter 5, verse 16 says, If any man see his brother in a sin, a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death, and I do not say that he shall pray for it. Please, sir, I want to understand the sin that is not unto death and the sin that is unto death. Thank you, sir. It's okay. Uh, be not overmuch wise. Is that so? As far as righteousness is concerned, there is no law against any act of purity and truth. Uh, concerning the fruit of the spirit, of love, of peace, of uh, uh, 
long suffering and all against such there's no law whether it, it don't love too much no don't be too peaceful no don't be too patient no don't be what no you since they are truth character of truth there's no how can you love to the point that you have loved more than god who is love himself no so but don't be overmatch righteous is talking about self righteousness self righteousness you have left the actual righteousness you have left the actual righteousness the bible says there is a generation that is wise in their own conceit wise in their own eyes that is pride so don't be self-righteous is that okay don't be self-righteous because that is a sin you will suffer for it don't be overmatch what again wicked don't be overmatch wicked of course there are evils that you do maybe as a human being there are evils you do but there are evils you purpose to do them there are evils you do as an unsaved sinner but there are evils you purpose to do them be careful because when you purpose to do a thing the judgment of it is serious this man harm harm so the father's nakedness and acted purposely in wickedness what did he attract to himself curse he attracted curse to himself the otherwise how could noah arise and curse him curse plus his children the the grade of that sin was high the grade of that sin and it involved a will a self-will about it and he was cursed so be careful of planning to do evil against someone sufficient are the evils you do because you are not born again when you come to purpose i will do this be very careful about that is that clear then when you see someone sin a sin that is not unto death ye shall pray for him and the lord shall forgive him but there is a sin unto death i say not unto you that you shall pray for him i say not unto you that you should pray for him look at it in that first john chapter 5 first john chapter 5 verse 16 if any man see his brother sin is sin which is not unto death general sin but not unto death in the sense that the, the person the conviction is still there there is conviction even when the person does it he feels it after he has fought he feels it which means he has not crossed the line but there are people who have sinned and have crossed the line just as we sing how do we sing that song even now thank you that's what even now it may be that the line you have crossed the line where you could obtain mercy you have crossed it uh, one of our brethren told me a story i i see the story illustrating this scripture he said a particular brother he knew he, the, in fact it was even a, the brother is a relation to him a, the man is a relation to him they were born again they served the lord joyfully i think he was, he was baptized in the holy ghost he was also a serious prayer warrior 
carrying out deliverance for people. Now, a time came, he said to him, he was telling them that he thought Jesus would come very soon, but the thing has delayed. So since Jesus has delayed, he will want to go over there to the world and commit some sin. Eventually, he will come back. Since Jesus is not coming now, he will commit the sin and then come back. So, he went. As a job, he literally left. He went to the marketplace. He wanted to commit sin there. He wanted to take alcohol. He didn't know how to, because he has not taken it for too long. And he so went to where people were sitting down. <laughs> this is a child of God. Though. He went to join them. They gave him the alcohol. He took it near his mouth. I, he said, I can't take. The Lord was still resisting. The Spirit of God was still warning him, don't take. Don't do this. Don't do this. But the people forced him, take it. I don't, you can take it. It's fine. Take it. He closed his heart and took that alcohol. Then, that is how darkness fell on him. The darkness of sin and backsliding. He now went after immorality. So, that's how he entered into the world. After a time, since he said he will come back, he really came back to church. But as he sat there, he was not hearing the messages again. The spirit to convict him of those messages was not convicting him anymore. So be very careful. You can cross the line. And they have seen him. So he told them that, after he sat for a lot, quite a time in church, he said he won't continue in church because he, he's not even understanding. His mind is not here again. Eh? So now he knows that there's no forgiveness for him. He has gone. So what he will do now, he's going to learn witchcraft and commit proper sin and be ready for hell. So he left them. And went and learned witchcraft from one terrible man in the village. And today he is one of the wizards. If you see a brother sin a sin unto death, you don't need to pray for him. Have you understood now? Uh -huh. So, but generally pray for people. Sometimes you may not know whether the person has sin unto death, you may not know. Pray for people. It may require God that will tell you like he told Jeremiah, don't pray for these people anymore. Don't intercede for them. My judgment is determined. Sometimes you may know. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 4. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tested the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. Is a backslide, a, a Christian can backslide. Some circumstance can waylay him. Some tensions can come upon him. But if you look at it, this man's case, a purposeful decision, after having been born again, after having been filled with the Holy Ghost, after having been a prayer warrior, a deliverance Christian, delivering others came to himself and sat down I will leave Jesus it's impossible is that clear it's different from David in his upper room saw a naked woman and was carried away 
and before you, any thought can be clear, he had committed immorality. Some other temptation can overlive. And his heart is born. Oh God, sorry, Father, Jesus, Jesus have mercy. It's not like that. So when you see this type of people, you don't pray for them. Because God will not answer. It's a shame. They're kneeling the Lord Jesus the second time to the cross. And he will not come to the cross the second time. So that's okay. They're on his gone. He saved you through one offering. You purposely in your decision turn off from him. You expect him to come again to the cross, but he will not come again. Bye bye. Is that okay? Okay, the next person. Praise the Lord. My question is on restitution. As I came into this movement, I got to know that restitution is important. That if you do not restitute some things, it may hinder you from entering heaven. And God has been helping me. I've started my restitution, and God has been helping me. We I want to ask question is that I went to do a restitution in one organization, WIAC office. And since I wrote that exam since 2013, because my result is not complete, I was not making use of that uh, result. So I went to WIAC office to go and do the restitution. They asked me of the original result. I told them that I'm not with it. I've not collected it from school. And I'm not making use of it. So then with the statement of result, I've come to restitute. I, I was even ready to submit. If they say I should submit the certificate. But they say I should go and bring the original result before they were attend to me. And for me, going down to the east to bring that original certificate, it will cost me a lot. It will cost me not less than 5000 to bring that certificate. My question here, as I've gone there to explain myself, and they say that I should go and bring that original certificate before they were attend to me, and the result, I'm not making use of it. I'm asking, and the money involved, I don't have it. For now, I'm asking, is it necessary for me to bond the certificate because I'm not using it? Or I should still go and collect that original certificate and go and submit to them because definitely they will collect it from me. That is my question. Praise the Lord. Well, uh, you know, the, there are people, I just want to perceive something that the Wayek people have been troubled with people who are doing restitution, restitution, restitution. So I want to think that they are taking measures to discourage it. Uh, and they are going beyond the truth in treating it. They sent that original result to your principal. Did they send to you? And you have not collected what they sent. Don't they have right to retrieve it from they sent it to? I don't know they want to retrieve it. That that which I sent to you for somebody is unfortunate. The person is not worthy for it. Bring it back. So we are checking up to know uh, whether they have right to say go and bring it back or they could have re written to the school retrieve back this information that is, they cannot go back to your school again is that so and retrieve that certificate or block you from taking it they cannot so you, it's only you that will go and collect it and send it to them it's okay so ask God for money. Uh, talking about restitution, because he says he came to Horemor and then learn about restitution. Uh, our sister, Sister Joy, 
of Auchi, the wife to Pastor Sylvester. Do you remember her story? She met me with her husband on Friday night after the marriage seminar and said in her revelation encounter recently someone met her and told her that she had a restitution to make which she had never made she wondered I have testified about my witchcraft openly. I hid nothing about it. Which restitution now do I have to make? They, they, they said, I mean, the, the person in the dream said, Do you remember the abortion you committed? When the child was up to six months in your womb, have you told your husband about her? Ah. It came to her. Then she was confessing it. Her husband was hearing it for the first time from her in my presence. She just decided to do that. So. Uh, now she brought her husband to me and began to narrate these dreams and came to say actually when they gave me assignment and I was not able to do the assignment maybe the assignment to kill her husband to initiate her husband and I was not able to do the assignment they requested for the child in my womb to do sacrifice for that child. So I had to do that abortion to cause the blood to appear over there in the occultic uh, world because they needed the blood of that child. Me being representative, so this was done already she had come to Horemo she was told that although you didn't believe you had known the word of God it is true you, your conscience tells you that killing that human being was evil that's what it means and you went to do that you are not going to heaven until you confess it and confess to the appropriate person so she came and this was done in occultic realm and she did not allow her husband to know that, that how she could manage herself for six months and the husband didn't know because the husband was asking her when did that one happen he said it's after this child Huh? Was it not? The, no, it's after this child. Ah. The husband was confused. But she was bringing it out. The husband forgave her. And she was happy. Uh, when I had this, being a witness to what was happening, I felt it. I felt it because I said, people don't confess witchcraft among us. You will say you have repented, but you don't confess your witchcraft. You don't confess what you have done. No apology. You just say, I am born again. Witchcraft is still there. Which message did you listen to in marriage seminar? 
What again? We listen to a message titled Witchcraft in Pastor's House. What's the title of the message? What's the title? How many of you listen to it? Ah, a few married people here. Witchcraft in pastor's house. You must confess your witchcraft. All this hiding game you are doing, you have not come into the kingdom. Hellfire is more than shame. Hell. And you won't come back to apologize. You will never come back to apologize. All this Christianity you are doing without genuine repentance and confession. Forget it. Are there few that shall be saved? Narrow is the way. Strive to enter in. So don't play with matter of restitution. You have not overgrown it. I have not overgrown it. Whatever the Lord tells me today to be a restitution, I must do it. I have not overgrown it. Don't overgrow it. If you are ashamed, the Lord says he will be ashamed of you before his father. You will never enter into the kingdom. He that will hide himself shall be exposed. He that exposed himself for righteousness sake, the Lord shall clothe him. <clears throat> Amen. The Lord shall clothe him. Margaret Amore wrote a letter the letter was read before us yesterday because she was pleading with me she would want to come for our conferences and we said no she wants to she's sure i am sorry i've repented yeah no there must be evidence i directed her to benin city see the coordinator of benin and let them examine you and i told the coordinator of benin tell her to go and put her her statements into writing if you see the writing of Margaret Amore you will see a person who really has repented amen in fact the Amore himself he said Amore is her second husband so they have done restitution they are no more together for one year now she said, I am ready to tell my lie, my false testimony, my all in the radio, in internet, in conference, anywhere. She began to apologize. All she has done to me as a person, to holiness revival movement, she is sorry. We should forgive. She doesn't want to go to hell. Restitution. Well, we are still handling it. Maybe you will see her face to face. Confess to the world that Satan did it. Of course, she yielded herself to the devil. But you can also see the mercy of God. Well, that's what Paul said, I am chief of sinners. Then, whose sin have you committed? This is somebody who lied against God that she died. She, she says, it's a lie. I didn't die. She lied that she went, and went to heaven. He says, it's a lie. I didn't go to heaven. She lied that she went to hell. She said, it's a lie. I didn't go to hell. Who lied against God? And the Lord can still be merciful to her. What sin 
have you committed that God will not forgive you? That the devil is busy hiding you, blocking you. What sin did you commit? Yes, the next question. Praise the Lord. My question goes like this is about the fruit of the womb. Like we have been going, they have been giving you suggestions, you should go for IVF. So finally you went for the IVF. The IVF, the reason why I'm asking about it is that for a righteous person, is it good for you to go for that? What is your mind about is express? Like maybe they naturally the child cannot stay then they now try to do it on their own certification that you can be able to have your own child then they go through that IVF as a child of God is it okay for you to go for that there's no problem about that okay thank oh. you sir okay that's all yes ah, there's no problem that's the wisdom of God okay and we pray that if you are going for it, the Lord grant you success in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. My first question is about uh, restitution. It's about uh, like someone who is a government worker. That you have been working as government for so long without paying your tithe. And when you discover this truth about uh, paying tithe and living a holy life, then you started paying your tithe. What about the, the ones you have not been paying for so long and you are close to retirement? What are you going to trust the person? What are this person supposed to do? Then the second question is about... At the time you awake to the truth and recover from backsliding and sin, begin to pay your tithes. Okay. From Thanks. then forward. Thank you, sir. The, the next question is about uh, my junior wife and mock. I wrote my junior work, there was an uh, exam at practice, so they help us in writing some of the, uh, the answer sheets. So we write it, then the, my mock, during my mock, I was very sick. I was not unable to write my mock, so it was my junior sister who writes it for me. So I didn't know what to do about the mock and the junior work. Is it that I would return it back to, to them or to the exam? Oh, it at my school. I didn't know about that. Write to the authority and tell them what you did. Oh, and you, follow sir. whatever they're telling you. Thank you, sir. So Thank lastly, you. about Waek. In 2016, I was writing my Waek. I thought that there would be holy awe because in my village, there is, there is a holy awe for those who don't want to do examination my practice. So in this place, I registered at Massacre. There was nothing like that. So we, we are combined together. And uh, the aid mistress and uh, the, the vigilators, they are the ones giving the answer. She, they are the ones that are supposed to hide this uh, exam and practice, and they are the ones sharing it to others. So I was trying to focus on my own to write my exam. So I had the process of writing my own. So they are fasting, giving them papers. Before you know, they have finished everything. And in the uh, objective, there is there to stand. They will stand and be saying, number one, A. Because when I was trying to write my own, there was, there was a place I was trying to write B. So as I mentioned it, I could not be able to write it because I've had it. So I need to change it and write another thing. So there is too much distraction in the all by right, doing these things as a child of God. What are you supposed to do? And in the end, they will collect, they will collect your answer, your, your papers, without completing your answers. So I don't know what I, as a child of God, supposed to do. Are you supposed to, because I, I will approach some of them that I have not written anything, I have not finished my answer sheet yet. Because me, I'm trying to write on my own. And people have finished writing all those things for those people. What am I supposed to do? They will collect it by first and go. So what are we supposed to do? You're supposed to fail. <laughs> yes, because you are in the wrong place. Is that not so? You are, you are supposed to fail. And if you fail, you, are, you fail righteously. So that we should learn the lesson that before you enter a vehicle, going somewhere, maybe the vehicle is going to Lagos, check the vehicle. Can this vehicle take me to Lagos? Examine it. Some of you will just enter into any vehicle 
vehicle looking is already bad you don't bother just 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 you look at this vehicle you don't even examine it when it goes to spoil in, in cafe road what do you do there don't you wait for the vehicle but you have cheated yourself because you were careless where you are going to register for examination did you take time to examine the characteristic of that place how they do it at the end what does that school do to her children at the end during examination do they allow these cheap cheap things to come in there if you don't do your investigation you really suffer these evils because you find yourself among robbers you find yourself among robbers people are going they say it's only one chance only one chance you didn't check very well you didn't study you just jump in your carelessness will make you suffer but in that way suffer in righteousness and don't do anything to help yourself in sin suffer in righteousness and god will know how to reward you the devils sat down and planned how to turn the whole world into hell and so they brought all departments into consideration all departments of life the market the government civil servants the companies schools nazareth primary secondary university and others they brought them into consideration and they sat down and designed corruption including churches they brought churches into consideration sat down and planned how to turn every student to hell how to turn government workers to hell how to turn church members of various churches to hell how to turn businessmen to hell because they knew that if you keep 99 of the laws and offend in one what happens you are guilty of all they brought families also into focus and planned how to cause the whole i mean all the members of the family to go to hell so the traps have been set in every department in schools they have ensured that passing exams should be made so simple and so easy that the students will not bother to study again and it will be so cheap that even the righteous students will just follow this corruption you are seeing a brother came up in Ibadan and testified as we went to Ibadan last two weeks or so a brother came who was uh, a teacher in the secondary school that masterminded all this corruption he said this corruption we are seeing now carries itself even to the wayek board right to the office there are people that are involved in it all through to the school add policemen inside it's just like you hear that armed robbers have police people also that protect them that will give them the gun <laughs> I'm telling you the world is well arranged even the soldiers and police standing on the way can help in case a, a big man passes them they will signal the arm robbers that somebody is coming somebody just passed us we look at him he, you can get something from him they will come from the bush and stop him who gave them the gun they have given the people the gun I mean the world is so connected in wickedness not allowing any person to go to heaven that is how the world is survival is for the fittest 
the violence shall take it by force they went into marriage and worked it out between husband and wife that it is not easy for a woman to come up and say I'm practicing righteousness who is married it's not easy it's not easy for members of churches denominational churches even when you know your pastor is carrying you to hell you will see it like that but the power to live is not there the power to live the boldness to live is not there it's as if they use something and chain you there I'm telling you such that righteousness is difficult it's God that is helping us that's why he said this is my movement he is the one breaking yokes in people breaking yokes bring giving deep deep things can you imagine god bringing this woman out of witchcraft to come and teach witches and wizards that are in holy more how they can repent and confess to the depth of their sin so that they can go to heaven except in fact how hardly it is for a sinner to make it to heaven how hard it is for a sinner oh how hard is it for the sinner that respects himself not ready to confess because he's protecting himself how hard is it for such a sinner to go to heaven now the children their certificates polluted 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 how can they go to heaven how can they so but that god is breaking these yokes just imagine this girl now go and bring back your certificate and she's busy complaining of five thousand hellfire and five thousand which one is more Are you getting it? It is God that is sanctifying you so that you can remove yourself from the pit of hell that Satan has dug everywhere. It's hard like that. In the business world, it's like very hard. The policeman is waiting for his 2029. 20, Allah, it has been, they have increased the money now to 50. The decree came from where? To, yes, there was a decree from somewhere from the Munich world that the money should be increased to 50 naira. Just 50 naira. So, what's your business? Just 50 naira. Pay your offering and then you can pass. Hell. So, and now, mercy again to us. The Lord came to tell us that, listen, this rapture we're talking about is in your lifetime not only in your lifetime maybe in 15 years to come no we're not thinking 15 years we're not even thinking 10 in fact we may not be thinking five years are we not fortunate is it not the mercy of god so take this privilege well if you want to go to heaven otherwise after you have been left on earth you will regret your shame you will regret your fear you will regret your big manism you will regret your treasures you will regret the women you will regret the men you regret for men women children money oh because then your eyes will open that why did i not expose myself why who blocked me? Satan, you are the one. Satan said, no. Did I block the other people? If you didn't cooperate. Did I have I blocked? What about those who went to heaven? Are they not human beings like you? Did I block them? You cooperated with me. So please, 50-50. Yes, the next person. Praise the Lord. Uh, my name is Samuel Ruben. Okay, is it possible 
a born again Christian to eat the animal that he dead without cutting the neck. Okay, to eat an animal. Yes, without cutting the neck. Without dead. cutting the neck. Yes. Okay. Or maybe it died by itself. Yes. Or it something hit it. He just died by himself. He didn't know what is. Even giving. in the Old Testament, God said if an animal died by itself, strangers could eat it. Is that what the Lord Bible says? Strangers could eat it. Which means human beings should eat it. Which shows therefore human beings can eat animals that died by itself not to eat animal that died by itself is an old testament law that that doesn't carry to the new testament it ended with christ the coming of christ the date and resurrection of christ ended those laws they are part of the ceremonial laws is that clear they are part of the ceremonial laws if maybe you were carrying a god in the boot and coming all the way from Lafia, by the time you reach Abuja, the god has died because of heat. You should throw it away. <laughs> Even you yourself, you will not like it to throw it away. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But if an animal died by itself and you don't want to eat because I don't really know what killed this animal. That's your own conviction. But others, allow them to eat. It is food for them. And it's sanctified by prayer and thanksgiving. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Please, Pastor, my question is concerning anointing oil. My husband is a pastor and he has a church. Now, he used to do this anointing and service. And then whenever he's doing it, I don't used to collect. And the other members, they will be coming out to collect the anointing oil. And why the wife of the pastor will be sitting down. And sometimes my children, some of them that used to follow me to Holy more, that have had the message concerning anointing. Some of them too will not even stand up to collect. And uh, my husband don't used to be happy. The thing used to hurt him that other members will be coming out. Why his family and the wife? So I want to ask, is there anything wrong? If I say, let me just come out and fulfill. All and right, fulfill just... what? <laughs> I don't know. At least to calm him. Because you can't put righteousness there. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, is there anything wrong as a believer? If I go and collect the, the anointing. And... Ye are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. Let your light so shine before me that they may see how you avoid anointing oil and follow your steps. Thank you. And uh, thank you, sir. Okay. And finally, Daddy, this, I want to use this opportunity to ask you and. Uh, Holy Mot, please to forgive me. There is something I did to Holy Mot. I want to ask for forgiveness. Last year, I vowed that I will be paying, I will be giving some amount of money for project. And at the middle of the year, I don't know how the thing just got out from my memory. Before I will even remember it again, it was ending of the year. And uh, you know, something you say you'll be giving every month. And I calculated the month, the last month I paid till December, the money was big. So I cannot uh, pray. Actually, so I we said didn't, this year I will yes, start. Please. We didn't ask you to vow a vow. Is that clear? 
because we know the implication please you're forgiven of that we know the implication of this we rather said how much in your own ability if you have the money you can be assisting per month in the work of the lord you think of your own but if you don't come to have don't bother is that clear don't bother about it you don't have that is it but in case in your case you say i forgot i forgot i couldn't remember it's not that i didn't have then in your judgment now what must you finish it or you can give a psalm to tell the lord actually i forgot but now it has become big i, I can't give all take this that is your heart and the lord will appreciate it is that okay but we don't want you to carry this burden of plates no of uh, if you don't we gave it for the year when the year finishes it stops there you are not to carry it over to the other year oh i fail what will i do it is the burden of these other churches upon their members we want to avoid so that you don't carry such burden is that clear do it willingly as you have if you don't have don't bother thank you sir i want to ask a question pertaining restitution um, some years back and i went for an event someone gave me a property so but it seems like he, he he told me he dashed me the the property or maybe i just he told me or maybe i'm to return it back but i'm not sure so i went home with it so later i gave my life to christ i don't know how to trace the person and the property is still with me so i don't know what what i'm going to do in that situation matter strength go to him and ask him this property you gave me my mind is not settled i don't know where he i can't find him i don't know where he is i'm not what is the property it's an it's an heart eh? it's an heart that people oh, wear. okay uh, uh -huh. did he ever ask you of it i can't tell i just saw him in that, has in that he event. ever told you now please bring it back to me has he ever told you like that no i don't know him i don't i don't know him before i just met him there i don't know him before i just met him there he, he asked you he said take and he, he gave me but i don't know whether he touched me or you I'm yourself should know among human beings when somebody is giving somebody a thing that he will collect back he will indicate if he's giving somebody a thing that he will not collect back you will know so don't allow your mind to take you to that point if it was for collecting back he would have followed after you to get it now that he didn't follow after you is clearly it's not for collecting back neither the two borrow were you the one who said he help me with your heart i was the one that met him oh you asked him to help you with your yeah, heart yeah, okay when you know. asked him to help you with his heart what was in your mind about it it was to help you so you can go with you forever or to return it later i can't tell you ah, no, 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 no. You, you who asked him to help you has the condition in your heart it has been long so i, I can't remember with certainly go and be praying about it okay sir mm. so my second question sir um i i met you sometimes back i am pertaining restitution about from my from my former school he told me i should write a letter to one of them that anybody that the response of anyone i should take it as response of all but there are others that i have done restitution to they have not replied me so should i write just one person at the person's response then i should take it as the response of all of them uh you know not everybody counts significant this act of restitution especially the little nature of it it is disturbing you but it's nothing to him it's foolishness he may not want to bother himself about it then apply scriptural law write a reminder if he does not reply you we should know that from the mouth of two or three witnesses every matter is confirmed you take the no reply for i have forgiven that matter okay praise the lord yes go ahead i have three brief questions one one is about myself i've been trusting god for a life partner louder i have been i've been praying about as in, as in for life partner okay so life partner. I, yeah so i have i have prayed and involved some uh, brethren 
So they joined me, pray both night prayers, and uh, we are fasted. So, but it look as if there is no, um, nothing is um, happening. So, I want to ask what next to do. That's number one question. Where do you stay? I stay in Kefina Sarasti. What work do you do? I do electrical work. How is your house? Is it prepared to receive a woman? I'm, I'm, no, sir. <laughs> 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 I'm planning to watch that, sir. <laughs> your, get your house ready to receive a woman. Okay, sir. Is that clear? Okay. Put things in order by faith that a woman is coming in. I try, while you continue your prayer, and when God sees that your house is in order, everything is in order, surely a woman will come to you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. The second question is that my um, elder brother, when um, Kefi um, Market uh, got burnt on, on um, December, so my elder brother um, rescued uh, a bag of uh, tiger nut for somebody. So he has looked for the person and he didn't see the person again. And that, and, 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 uh, that thing is still in his place. So I want to ask what as in, as in do, do we do about it? Was the person a neighbor to him? No, sir. How did he carry it to his place? He knows the as in he met the as in the the um, person inside the market, so and now assisted him to okay, carry okay, it. So okay. before he could come to give the person the thing, he couldn't see the person again. He now took it to the house. Oh, it has not spoiled. No, sir, it has not spoiled. It's a ah. dried one. Eh? Dry one. Okay, dried one. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, you know, there are two options. One, carry it to the police station and explain to them. But I trust he will be afraid that the police will say he stole it. Is that? Let him take counsel because that is the best thing to do. This is what happened in the market. And uh, I can help this man. Uh, to carry his property but eventually we got confused I kept it for all this while looking for whether I will come across him I have not come across him so I cannot use it so I'm bringing it to the police station thank you very much sir. is that okay yes sir so the third one is uh, about uh... but let him take sufficient counsel about this from around to see police behavior. Can somebody speak for this? Maybe a policeman. No, a policeman. Any policeman that can speak? Praise the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. So what he will do is by taking the tiger note to the police, first of all, when he approached police, explain how it happened. After explaining, what they will ask him is he will write undertaking. Yes. When he write undertaking, they will file it. When they file it, then they will keep the tiger note as an exhibit. At any time, if they come to across to the owner, they will give it to him. Are you a policeman? Yes, sir. I uh, hope they will not lock him up and say he's no, 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 sir, no, sir, no, sir. <laughs> okay. Yes. Sir. yes okay. Praise the Lord. Uh, sir, another way also is the market union of that market. You can take it to the association. In all markets, there is an association, the market union. You can take to them. In fact, in some places, each line has their own units. So when the person comes back to the market and complains, they will give it to him. I think this is simple. Sir, so the third one is uh, about uh, a man that married a wife. So, and they have lived for a very long time, and they had six uh, children. So, and along the line, they had a, as in a um, problem. So, they now parted. So, the man now went and married a girl that is even as old as her daughter. So, he now said that uh, uh, he's uh, as in he does not have um, a as um, marriage um, concept. That is why he did it. So I want to ask if the man is, is, is right. 
Amen. He married his first wife. Yes. And they had children. Yes. Up to six children. Yes, sir. Then what has the first wife done to him now? I don't know. It's a misunderstanding that uh, came in uh, between them. I didn't hear. They had a misunderstanding. Okay. Uh, they, he married her with the parents' consent? No. <clears throat> Why? The first wife. Yes. Why did he not marry her with the parents' consent? Although it's a brother that asked me to ask the question. So and, uh, I, you cannot now stand for that question. You cannot stand for it. We have to know and verify the marriage. Even if he didn't marry the woman with the parents' consent. Now, the woman has given birth to six children for him and has become old. To send such a woman away, I didn't pay your dowry, I didn't even go to your parents, will be wickedness. Because you are sending her into the world, she may not get husband again. She has been, she has, in fact, she has been used up. She may now just go, go to be for wayfaring men. Anybody can, can use her. Anybody can use her. Because nobody will come to marry her again. Then you who send her away, you are a wicked person. And you say, hey, but I didn't pay dowry. Go and pay dowry now. Go and settle with the parents. And keep her. Because she has serviced you for these 20 years. And you want to, because she is a woman and has lost her virginity, has lost her own glory. You are a man, you are still strong. That's why you want to do her like that. The golden rule says, do to others as you will want them to do to you. Whatever you will not want to be done to you, don't do to your neighbor. So, can somebody do like that to you? Will you like somebody to do like that to your sister? After having gotten your sister for 20 years and have exhausted your sister and has known that your sister can have no any husband anywhere. He said, go, by the way, I didn't pay your, your, your salary. The, God, the father of that woman, who is the God of heaven, will be angry with the man. Carry that woman to her parents. Go and pay. Go and make promise and begin to pay gradually until you are able to finish and keep that woman. Otherwise, this is wickedness. If you go and both the man and the woman say, we don't want, to, we don't want you again, we don't want you again, God should be witness that it's not coming from you. But that the parents of this woman and the woman herself is the one saying no. Then God be witness it's not my wickedness it's not my loss for younger women that has caused me to send this woman away but i have done justice i have really presented my case before the lord and god they are the one who said no is that okay thank you god bless everybody let's rise up upon our feet and worship the lord for the word of God he has granted unto us today. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, 
messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, Holiness Revival Movement at gmail.com God bless you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through Him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. You are the living Savior. I believe
you purchased me with your blood you are my lord and my savior you left your throne above and took up the form of a servant for my sin I believe, I believe. 